Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to today's Ask the Experts. My name is Carl Capolingua. I'm the market analyst over here at Think Markets Australia, and it is a pleasure to join you today. It has been a couple of tough weeks on the market, really. It doesn't matter who you are or how long you've been around, um, no doubt. You've probably struggled at some stage to get to grips with what's going on. If I can do anything today, hopefully I can equip you with the knowledge to do it a little bit better next time to be uh, forewarned is to be forearmed, as they say. Let's head over to the charts. Um, NASDAQ's just there because I guess I need to start with something. I might as well comment on it. Um, if you follow me on Ospis or follow me on Twitter, you know my opinion on the NASDAQ is that we have been in a bear market for a number of months now. And really the killer for me uh, was this failure here. That was the key. I mean, after that, uh, it, it was pretty much going to be lights out. Um, and then look, I mean, if you want to be really certain, probably as we broke through 12, uh, triple five. But uh, the, the fact that, you know, on the way up, we had so much support from that dark green zone. Uh, for people that don't know, they are my 144 and 233 exponential moving averages. And I use that as a sort of a dynamic trend measure. And I expect, it doesn't happen all the time, but it does often happen, as we can see certainly here, 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 and here, to be fair, um, the price when it comes back to that zone tends to get pushed back off that zone, so dynamic support. Uh, once we uh, fall beneath that, it's not necessarily the end of the world. We can potentially regain it, but we need to regain it. The problem is when this area starts to go from uh, acting as dynamic support to now acting as dynamic resistance, then you're in trouble. Uh, and not only did we fail here, I think that you get these little false starts when you get above it and you think, well, maybe, maybe there's a rally and then you quickly plunge back beneath it and then it's just all hope uh, is gone. Of course, then obviously the trend changes, but before that you've got changes in the short-term trend to give you clues and price action going from high peaks, high troughs to you know lower peaks, lower troughs, et cetera. Um, Anyway, the, the trend is your friend here. I can't see any reason to not continue to expect prices to, to, to fall or at least to trend lower. I can't see any candles just here yet to suggest that even we could get a bounce. And look, I hope it happens, uh, but there's just nothing in there right now to suggest that uh, we're going to see this excess of demand uh, come in and, and you know, let alone come in, but sustain itself. If we do, you know, Tomorrow's, but tonight, I should say, is another candle. If we do, then we're going to have problems in this zone here. Okay, so I'm not saying we can't have a rally, but any rally is going to struggle. 11.035 is a problem, but probably as these um, short term trend, uh, the short term trend ribbon, which is the uh, 21 and 34 EMAs, as they come down, we're going to see this sort of confluence here uh, of potential resistance. I'm going to call it, say, 11.3 to 11.5. Now, when we get there, if we see a bunch of white candles, then the rally has some legs. We can probably go higher. High peaks, high troughs would, would be great as well. Um, if we see a bunch of black candles in there, it's just more of the same. It's just more of this sort of stuff uh, where that light pink zone is pushing the price down. It will be interesting because it will definitely have an impact on our local market. Hey, let's, let's just sneak in a quick one here because it probably provides some context on everything we're going to talk about today. That, that is the local market. What was tricky about this time, there's always something tricky, you know, about, uh, about every major market top is that this market actually fed pretty well uh, until only the last couple of weeks. As you can see this um, push down once again off the decisive long-term trend zone, just you know, nipping above and watch those little nips above uh, and then failures that they, they can be really brutal after that because all that hope that is pushed into the long side um, suddenly needs to change. Today's candle is promising. Hey, I like that. That's a, that's a, that's a pretty decent candle there. It, it came at a level that surprises me a little bit. I can't really see why this level, um, but I don't always have to understand why, to be fair. 62.48 would have made more sense, but you know, if it's here, it's here. Um, it's, it's what happens now. So if we, if we see high peaks, high troughs from here, that's a good sign. If we see more candles, uh, demand candles, white candles, lower shadows, that's a good sign. Apart from that, it's ditto on the NASDAQ. Whilst we may rally, we're going to have problems probably in, into 67.58, and we'll have to watch the price action of the candles when we get there. Um, should you be piling all that cash you had on the sidelines into the market based upon that one candle? I'm going to suggest no. I don't think there's enough evidence to do that just yet. So it's more sort of just, just tentatively watching and waiting for a little bit more confirmation. Hey, if we have to give up 100, 150 points to get that confirmation, I'm pretty happy to do that. Rather than doing what so many investors have done over the last couple of weeks, throw their money in when they think it's cheap and then get disappointed and disappointed again. Uh, so the trends are your friends there. I'm not going to 
uh, try and go against any of those trends at this stage. Okay, first in best dress today is Barry. We'll do that one. And then I've got a couple from, uh, not Bitcoin. Uh, I won't talk about Bitcoin. Um, <laughs> Ditto on everything I've just uh, said previously. Let's get to some, some stocks. Uh, so BHP from Barry, which to be fair, uh, two weeks ago was looking pretty good, wasn't it? It was just coming up against this potential supply zone. But I would have thought, I would have thought that with this test here, we would have removed some of that supply. So the way you need to imagine any supply zone, and the reason why there's supply there is because a bunch of people got at this level. They thought uh, Beach Peter was going to the moon, and down here, um, they're feeling pretty sad about things. And they wish, beyond all wishing, that Beach Peter will go back up um, to erase that mistake they've made. Now, not everybody's going to think like this, but some people will think, you know, 48 for me is break even. If PHP ever get back, gets back to 48, I'm out. And that out means supply. Okay, so it's, this is the whole point of resistance. This is how res levels of resistance form. I don't call them resistance, I call them points of supply. I think point, a point of supply makes so much more sense than resistance. What does resistance even mean? But if you imagine that, that the first time you get up to that level, the supply is about that big. Okay, and these tests are important because each time we, we hit that level, the supply gets a little bit less, a little bit less, a little bit less. That, that sort of latent supply at that level until eventually, if you do enough tests, you can get through it. Supply's gone and we can go through it. Look, didn't happen this time. There's too much supply there uh, and other market events conspiring. What we end up with is a short-term downtrend, uh, I think is pretty safe to say. Long-term trend is holding. I think that's encouraging. Um, the fact that we... Uh, are not responding to that candle. I think that's also encouraging, but this candle here is hardly what I would say inspiring. It's not enough even, I'm gonna to suggest, to get back half of yesterday's bearish momentum, maybe not even half, so that, that's concerning. Uh, but I can tell you with some confidence that you should, should watch this area through here. So this is where the demand really, um, sorry, this demand, I'm still, thinking about a bull market, uh, this is where the supply really kicked in, right? So um, there was a great deal of motivated supply here. If we can get above that level with a nice white candle, what will the nice white candle look like? Well, it'll look something like that. Okay, well, not exactly like that because there's a default fill on it. And if I turn it to that, that's exactly what it will look like. So if we see that closing above that high there, and I'll give you that high, it's 42.18. Uh, that does change things for BHP. So if we can do that, the supply that was there is gone. How do I know? Well, we've closed above it. The only, only way you can close above that is if you have met that supply. Okay. Uh, and then we would start to think that maybe this uh, long-term uptrend uh, is holding and we could get a rally back up. So uh, I like to always finish each analysis with a buy, hold, sell. And I would say at this stage, you could hold it but I would be really concerned about a close beneath that low. So at 40, 16 or lower, and let's just call it um, you know, 40 and a bit. So a 30, 80 or lower, maybe even that. I think it's lights out for this one, uh, pro probably for a while. Uh, that low there, 39, 27. I don't know if you have to give it that much, but you kind of get my drift here. Um, beneath here, we're in, we're in real trouble. Beneath there, it's not great, but maybe you've got 40 just giving you, 40 and that demand point, just giving you a little bit of maybe a bit more leeway to give it some more room. It's frustrating because you'd love to have just this this point. Okay, that's the point, but to be fair, you know, that's probably the point there, isn't it? Um, so that's the worst case scenario. Beneath that, oh, as much as I love BHP, I have to go to sell. Above that, I can stay with a hold. Can I call it a buy? No, I can't call it a buy until I see the stuff that I just talked to you about, okay? So that's the technical picture. Uh, I don't think I could get any clearer than that. If you were wondering, let's head over to the, the fundamentals. And what we have here, well, I can't say with any certainty it's going to work for BHP because my spreadsheet, which I'll explain what it does in a second, does struggle with some of these resource companies because brokers tend to have estimates which you know look like that um, down the track, and we don't get uh, we don't get really nice numbers in here, unfortunately. But it's the data comes from Thomson Reuters Refinitiv Icon product. Uh, what they do is they provide for me the historical data. These these are the cells I fill in, the things I'm interested in, uh, but also the forecast data from the various brokers. Now there are 18 brokers covering BHP, so that's a, a great critical mass of brokers. So I think we can actually look at this. Um, with a great deal of confidence, or at least these numbers, uh, four strong buys, seven buys. So let's say it's pretty positive towards it. Nine holds, no sells, no strong sells. That's pretty encouraging. Their earnings per share estimates going forward. Well, you know, 
when you get sort of 88, 35, and then minus 12, minus 27, minus 8, you can see there's a lot of volatility here in BHP's uh, historical and also expected earnings. We've got an average growth rate for the next sort of three uh, to four years of ne uh, negative 16%. Okay, so that's would be a little bit of a concern. Now, is there a high chance of hitting that, a moderate chance of hitting that, or a low chance of hitting that? Um, well, the bar is set so low, okay, I think, that we could probably leave that low. And then you go, well, it's a commodity stock, so maybe you should probably go with a moderate one because anything can happen. But I think the brokers have factored that in. So I'm gonna leave that with I'm gonna leave that with low, but that is an educated guess. And let's face it, fundamental analysis is all about educated guesses. You think technical analysis is about educating guess educated guesses? Fundamental analysis is educated guesses squared compared to technical analysis. Next thing I like to do is um, check out the right PE to hold this uh, to, or hold it to hold it to account. And the right PE for this is tough because, well, you know, tw is 25 the right PE for BHP? Is 15 the right PE for BHP? Is 10 the right PE for BHP? And you kind of have to say, well, what would you, this is a very personal thing, what would you be prepared to pay? Well, I think 10 is still pretty cheap for BHP, to be honest. Um, this is saying that uh, looking at the forecast numbers, uh, so through here, I can't remember if I include that or not, I can't remember, but looking, let's say those, um, the median is 8.7. Okay. Now you can also go targets. You can say, well, I think that's a bit low for BHP. Actually, I'd, I'd be quite comfortable playing 10 times for BHP and it's still showing that potentially it's overvalued. But I did say at the start, my spreadsheet struggles when you get this, because this, it's, it's not normal. That's not normal to see. Um, so what, what, are, what are the brokers kind of saying? Well, to get up here, uh, they're still potentially using historical. I don't know. Well, there you go, isn't it? So there you go. So they're saying, uh, well, BHP, uh, it's is yeah they're sort of still comfortable paying about 16 times earnings uh, for BHP which you know let's let them do that uh, and then you decide what you're prepared to pay let's head to the next one which I better get to these uh, Twitter ones before I forget about them and they are uh, RMI for Cameron and I won't put that into the fundamental analysis tool because I don't think we're going to have any fundamentals on this one. So small mining company, uh, which up until today's candle looked amazing. Uh, now today's candle is not terrible by any stretch of the imagination. I'm just going to zoom out to my normal zoom, and I can see the trend is wonderful. Okay, so this is this is all wonderful and fantastic through here. Uh, what a breath of fresh air to see a chart like this, given how many charts are looking you know the opposite right now. Uh, we saw a little bit of um, congestion through here. Uh, you know, you can see how often shadows and black candles create at the very least a pause uh, in the price action. And that's, I think, what we're seeing. But we, we, we um, came back through this really well. You can see sort of that, these rising troughs through this consolidation phase, some decent candles through here. Uh, and then a little bit of a test, a test sort of here. So that's a test of this supply zone. Again, just imagining how much supply is the market and then through it today. Look, a disappointing, disappointing candle today because you'd like to see on the break um, that we go through it go through that we follow through and we haven't seen that I don't think it's necessarily a reason to get out though I don't think you'd go well you know that is such a, a huge uh, supply marker uh, that it's going to force a, a trend change now if we see more evidence of excess supply at this point, which really should have seen excess demand, I will grow increasingly concerned that it is a false breakout and therefore could precipitate a more severe decline. I don't think we're there. So look, I'm happy to go hold on this one. I wanna see how this candle plays out because remember, this candle is still live and there's still a couple of hours at least of trading for today. And that candle can and will change. And um, you know, I've often said, oh, I like something in, in Ask the Experts and by the end of the session, the candle's completely changed. So just, just understand anything I say today is predicated on something that is uh, a moving target. So if we close with a big white candle today, hey, forget everything, we're okay, we're fine, nothing to worry about. Uh, if it gets worse and worse, then um, let's, you know, let, let's call it a supply side candle and we may need to manage our exits. Until then, I'm happy to hold on the basis of the strong trends. Can I buy it today? No, I can't because of all of those uncertainties that I discussed, but it's a strong hold, um, not quite a sell just at this stage. That's resource mining company. Um, honestly, it's a chart I've followed for a long, long time. If you follow me on Twitter, you know I've been tweeting about it, or I'm gonna say maybe even probably around here, certainly around here, certainly around here. It's been one of my most tweeted about charts. Um, if you're on it from about five or six, you know, you're doing really well uh, and, and hopefully you know, that's you. Um, but I can tell you 
I have no idea what it does and it doesn't stop me from tweeting about it and you know encouraging people to look at these charts because I find that the least the least at least the less I know about what a company does the better you know I want to be totally clueless about what's going on I just want to read the charts I just just give me my candles and I'm fine. I find that the more I know about the company, the more I tend to end up doubting the story or get out too early. I tell you, it's happened to me time and time again. The more I know about the company, the worse I trade it. Um, so if, you, if you're on this, you don't know what it does. You don't need to. Let's get to the next one, which is uh, FEX, Phoenix from King, uh, which looks okay. now actually looks pretty good compared to the rest of the market. So in, in, in relative strength terms over the last three months, it is wildly outperforming the market. Um, I have an indicator just under the screen. You can't see it, but that confirms for me that's the case. Um, so on that basis, uh, it's impressive. But whether it's a buy or not, that's where I'm sort of struggling. And I can certainly see lots to like about it. Um, Long-term uptrend is there, but it's it's very shallow, isn't it? It's a, it's a very shallow angle of attack. Short-term trend is okay. Um, let's call it neutral. Now, this candle here is fantastic. I, I love it. The fact that this trough is above this trough is great, but the fact that this peak is below this peak is not as great. We've got sort of this wedge pattern. We kind of, seen, kind of need to see which way we break out of it. I would suggest, given that the trend is up, we tend to, and this is a probability thing, is you know, 51.49, right? Uh, we tend to break uh, through the upside of that uh, pennant or flag or whatever you want to call it. So happy to go a hold on this one. It's not the most exciting chart out there for me. Um, so I don't think I can get to a buy just yet, but uh, you know, it, it's certainly not a sell at this level. If you don't know what they do, they are an iron ore company um, from memory. And I did a bit of a deep dive on this probably about 12 months ago. Uh, when iron ore was all the rage. And from memory, they had a really, um, you know, a really nice high grade shallow resource, a front end load of stuff, just, you know, dig it out, pop it on a, on, a, on a truck, then on a train and send it to China sort of thing. But it was a finite resource. It was gonna run out, you know, pretty short sort of mine life. So it was just what they could get for it in the short term, uh, return that capital, uh, you know, I mean, any, any profits to shareholders and that was, that was probably gonna be it. And I think that's why you haven't seen this one do as well as maybe some of those iron ore companies with, you know, longer mine lives and exploration potential to, you know, further pad that out. Okay. Next one, um, back to my list of people that are here today, is GMA, which is Genworth Mortgage Insurance. And so I just saw that in bit. Um, so we talked about you know supply events before and what they look like. That's not good. Obviously, short-term trend down, um, straight through the long-term trend zone. What do we do from here if you're still on it? Uh, commiserations, but that is good. So this is encouraging. It's happening at the right level. So at $2, nice big round number. And also at an area where we've had sort of previous demand in the past. You know, this is a nice follow-up candle. Sorry, this is a nice follow-up candle. And this is actually not too bad today. Um, I'd like it to be better because, you know, the broader market's up. Uh, but I think, look, I think we can bounce. The problem I think coming uh, up for this one is the potential that, you know, this short-term this long-term demand zone, I should say, is going to act as a potential um, dynamic resistance area. And between 250 and 260, we might have some issues. But how will you know? Well, you know, if, you, if I'm not here on a Tuesday to help you out, how will you know? Well, if we see a bunch of black candles in and around this zone, and the candles we're talking about, these are the supply side candles. These are the ones that we don't want to see. They will be black, and they will be filled black, and they will either look like that or more than likely even something that looks like this. So we'll have a body and then we'll have a shadow uh, pointing up and it won't be, but well, it might be that big. You never know. Uh, let's put that one there. <laughs> and to save time, I won't uh, change it to a shorter one, but you get my drift where you could have a long upper shadow. Um, so either of this candle or this candle occurring in here, uh, I'd become very, very concerned and that would add to the supply event which we saw here. So this is a big supply event. And when we see these supply events, I do counsel you in these sessions not to ignore them, uh, but to, to take some action and manage uh, your exit. Now what you do 
is up to you. I can't force you. I'm not going to call you up and send you a, or send your text messages. Hey, look, don't forget, there's a supply event. This is what you need to do. You know, you've got to take some responsibility for this. And I think we can see, as, as good as the trend was on the way up, we can see some signs here that uh, you know that candle's not great, but not necessarily reason to sell. Okay, but I have told you time and time again, watch for if we see supply building, watch for black candles coming out. Look at that one there. Look at that one there. Look at that one there. Look at building supply. There's another batch there. And really, this is not good. But the problem is it fell so quickly. So you could say, well, that's not great, um, but it's probably a close beneath this low here that 285 so close at 284 or lower you're going to sell it but look how sharp that fall was so as much as you would have you know if you could have got out maybe 283 whatever great but you you might have only seen it here and got 270 but still 270 is better than two dollars isn't it so you know we have to be proactive with these things we can't stick our head in the sand and say oh well you know it'll, she'll be right it'll get better and it's a good stock or long term or you know how many times have we have these uh, when we got into these short-term trades that in this environment end up being long-term investments, quote unquote investments, because we weren't, um, you know, we didn't have the guts, we didn't have the guts to to manage our exits. You know, when all the signs were there, the market is always talking to you, it's just chatting away to you. You just have to, you know, tune your in uh, and listen to it. But then listening is one thing, acting is the next thing, isn't it? Uh, now, let's go to Chris. Chris is asking about CBA. Oh, I don't think this one's finished. I mean, we've seen some charts uh, today already, which are showing some nice signs of demand coming in. This is this is pretty pathetic. I mean that that is terrible in terms of you know rampaging demand coming in to scoop up the bargain that potentially CBA CBA is. I'm not seeing it. Uh, I'm seeing a little demand, and if there is demand, there's some supply, some pesky supply around. Uh, to meet it. Now, the stock's fallen quite a bit, you know, 110, 108, down to 88, now 20%. Now, you would ordinarily think big blue chip stock like CBA, nice dividend yields, falls 20%. There'd be a bunch of people out there falling over themselves to buy it. Well, maybe that's the case. We can see there is a bit of um, volume in here. Remember, volume is buying and selling. So elevated volume means elevated uh, buying, but that buying is being met, isn't it? It's been more than met by the selling. Why do people not like this one so much? And when I say people, I don't mean people like you and I, because we don't matter in the markets. I'm talking about the big institutional investors. Why don't they like it so much? Uh, why are they so keen to get out? And then why are there so few other institutional investors uh, prepared to get back in? And I do like to, you know, uh, you know, monitor the media, and I do see talking heads get up and they talk about, you know, what their um, their, their clients are doing. And uh, you do hear from a lot of these discount brokers how all our clients are really loving things right now um, because, you know, our big banks they love to buy when they're down, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I think that's what you're seeing. I think that demand is coming in from you know, mum and dad investors, uh, and what you're seeing is um, the institutional side of things sit on this one. Uh, this is the key level here. Uh, if we can get back above that, you know, there's there's a chance for a rally. Uh, if we continue to hover beneath that, and it's reinforced by this candle. This candle is is really important here. Let me zoom in. It's 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 absolutely crucial to understanding the CBA uh, supply and demand picture. As you, you can see on this rally, and this is actually a pretty good candle here. Uh, but on this rally, where we we really failed, didn't we? We failed at the previous point of demand okay and this is something you have to know uh, that this these previous points of demand i don't call them support support what does support even mean okay i've got lower back support i don't know <laughs> what is support but i can tell you that was a point of demand or there were points of demand how do i know the points of demand um, well you don't have to be a genius the, the price went up okay so i know they were previous points of demand the problem is this represents break even to a bunch of investors how many investors probably quite a few so this is how support and demand uh, support and resistance form uh, and i hate to use the terms but let me just say all this uh, support Support, support in here, it just equals break even for a bunch for a bunch of investors, right? Now, whether it's pumps and dads, whether it's institutions, we all tend to think in the same way. But that break even point is well, if we can get back up there, it gives a bunch of investors, not all the investors, it gives them the ability to erase their mistake of getting in at that point, okay? And they can potentially become supply. And it's just like we said before about supply levels up top, um, these levels will work exactly the same. There is an amount of supply there, however big that is. Now, it could be, it could be this big for all we know. 
And if it's that big, I tell you what, CBA is never getting through that level. It's going to go to 70 before it ever gets back to 100. Okay, it could be this big, it could be this big, we don't know. But we do need to go through this process of testing it uh, and understanding based upon the candles when we get there, just how significant that is. Because I tell you what, if we hit that level, we see a bunch of those um, black candles that I showed you in, in, the, in the previous analysis. The, the big black candles are the ones with the upper shadows. I tell you, that supply is not that big, it's probably that big. Hey, if we get there and we hit it with a bunch of white candles, so the supply is less than that big even because it's not there. The, the white candles will tell you, the closers at the high above that level will tell you that demand's gone, uh, that supply's gone. Okay, so we are using uh, the tools I'm giving you to identify these key pressure points in the market, and then we're gonna watch and wait to see what happens there to make our decisions. I tell you what, um, I can do CBA very easy in terms of buy, hold, sell. This is not a buy for me, as much as you know, a lot of those talking heads might say, you know, our clients are loving things down here. This is not a buy for me because it's the institutions don't want to buy it. In fact, they're, they're still laden onto the sell side. Uh, is it a hold? I can't see any reason to hold it either, to be honest. Uh, why? Why would you hold it? Maybe you would hold it on the basis of just seeing how we go in here. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's your strategy. So, well, look, um, I get what Carl's saying. It doesn't look great, but I'm going to hang on. I'm going to see how this plays out. If I see those black candles there, then I'm going to make my own decision, my own educated decision, yeah, with the knowledge I've gained to, to make a call on what to do. If I see white candles, then I'll continue to hold. Um, but if it breaks beneath here, then we could very, very easily go for another leg down. Uh, that low there, 86.98. Watch out for that level, um, especially if you you know close beneath it with a big black candle. Let's see if we can find some other levels where it could be going. If we break through there, probably down to here. Which is not that far away, is it 80 uh, and maybe um, maybe 75 is the low of this next swing down, but who knows where it could end, you know, we don't know. This, this could be, we, we could have just started the next GFC. We could have just started the next GFC. And let me show you CBA at the end of the last GFC. Well, there you go. Look, how, how it actually didn't, it actually didn't do, oh, no, it did. I was gonna say it didn't do that bad. It did, did do that bad. Look at this, it went from um, 60, or just above 60, uh, to below 25. So it halved in value, uh, you know, more, more than halved in value. So if, if CBA this time does the same thing, uh, you know, 110 could be 60 or could be 55. Okay, so don't be so arrogant to think that, well, CBA will never do that. Well, it has done that. It's, it's done it times and times before. Okay, so anyway, you've got a roadmap on what to do there. Are we curious as to what CBA looks like in the fundamentals? I'm not that curious, to be honest, but for completeness, let's do this. How are we going on time? About halfway through. Got to pick up the pace, says everybody, because they want their stocks analysed. Uh, CBA. Now, we need to um, uh, reset some of these things here. Let's go back to Dynamic F. Uh, let's check the brokers, uh, 15 brokers. Hold, sell, strong sell. How about that? Look at that. Hold, sell, strong sell. I was not expecting to see that. Uh, but having said that, they're also bearish on it, but this still got a price target that's 7% uh, above the current uh, brokers. They are funny, funny creatures. Okay, EPS estimates, 3%. I, 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 I think it can probably do 3%, can't it? I don't know, maybe the economy's gonna go over a cliff. Maybe 3% is not even possible. Don't know, let you decide. Uh, PE for this one, dynamic 15. Oh, 15 seems, it feels high for a, <laughs> for a bank. It just, 15 for a bank seems high. It's the top limit of what I would pay, personally, 15. So on that basis, I'm not gonna change a lot here, but I'm gonna say CBA, it just, it always, it's always looked overvalued to me and nothing's changed. I think CBA is overvalued by potentially 17%. And that is at the top of what I would pay for it. I, I, I think CBA would be a bargain if it gets to 10, in which case, if it gets down to 46 bucks, it's gonna be um, pretty good value, okay? Let's keep moving. Thanks, Chris. Next one is BOE. Oh, one of our one of our crowd favorites, Boss Energy. One of my favorite favorite stocks um, because it's you know uranium. I'm a bit of a uranium bug, <laughs> but I have said uh, in terms of my musings on uranium, it, it could take it could take a while. It's not going to be a lithium style explosion. It's going to be a slow burn. No pun intended. Uh, and that, the problem with that is people get excited, then they get disappointed. They get excited, they get disappointed. And you know, when they get excited, <laughs> stock tends to go up a little bit. When they get disappointed, it tends, tends to go down a lot. I don't like this pattern. It doesn't look good. We've talked about this a number of times. And as much as I've said, oh, if I squint, I can hold it. Um, if it gets beneath here, be very careful. That's where we are right now. So this is not my decision to make. I don't own Boss Energy right now. 
it's your decision to make. I've told you about this one a number of times. The trend is changing. You know, we said uh, we've said things like, "Well, as good as it looked here, <laughs> you know, you got you can't ignore this, and you can't ignore this, and you can't ignore this." So, you know, sometimes you have to either get the message or just commit to it and hold forever. <laughs> okay, but I'm going to go ditto on this one. The trend is changing. It it has probably changed, and you know, on, a, on an updated day, which uh, it should be doing much better. Um, it's closing beneath a key level there. Uh, now, I do have an update coming through. It's uh, 32 past 11, Perth time. And I get an update at 20 minutes past the hour from my data provider. So I've just clicked update and this candle might change. I hope it does because it'll illustrate that we are looking at live candles. So if we zoom in a little bit. Oh, I didn't even see that little white candle there. Sorry, I was thought we were the last one was the, the large black one. It's this little white one. I couldn't see if it changed or not, but anyway. Um, it, it doesn't change my analysis on this one. It's it's uh, it's it's got problems. Boss Energy uh, from Lakshan. Let's have a look at DVP. Sure, which is de Develop Global. Not one I'm familiar with. Let me zoom out. It's important we zoom out each time we do a new analysis, so we can see that broader trend and we can compare trends. Uh, if I I'm happy you've brought this one up, Lakshan. If only to talk about why this looks like it's in real big trouble. Uh, and it is the perfect example, the perfect case study for looking at how trends change. And they don't train, they don't, you know, everybody thinks, ah, oh, markets go up and then they crash. And on the way up, you need to be really careful because, you know, if it goes up, it might crash. You know what, markets markets pretty rarely go up, then, then crash. I'll tell you what markets do more often than not. And the vast majority of times is markets do this sort of stuff. <laughs> they do this, they do this, they do this, they do this, and then they do this. Can you see this pattern, this same pattern here on that last chart of DVP? We go from periods of excess demand. Okay, you call this a bull market. I call this a period of excess demand. Then we call, uh, then we go into a, a place of equilibrium. Okay, where demand and supply are equal. Now, what could cause that equilibrium? Well, we had excess demand. So a couple of things could happen. Demand can pull back. All right, demand pulls back and now is equal to supply, right? Supply never changed, just demand pull back. Why did demand pull back? I don't know, maybe uh, Jerome Powell started saying some things the market didn't like, okay? And supply never changed. Or demand could stay exactly the same, but supply increased. And they're all gonna, you know, there's different combinations of the two, but supply equals um, demand. And then we get to the point where for whatever reason, either supply increases or demand decreases or a combination of both, which is worse. And if you get the combination of both, you get a much steeper decline, don't you? Okay, um, now DVP. So it's, markets, oh, there's you know, six o'clock news, the market crashed, you know, X trillion wiped off. Yeah, okay, surprise, surprise. No, not a surprise. Uh, these things play out over months. Okay, that's the norm. Now let's go back to DVP because ditto for this one. I don't have to spend long on this, but if you can now read the chart, we're in a bit of trouble here on DVP. Okay, that doesn't look great. Buy, hold or sell, let's eliminate buy. That is not gonna happen from me. Now, hey, you might get a fundamental analyst come up there, another talking again and say, develop global, it does this and this and this and earnings are great and the outlook's fantastic. Hooli dooly, good for you, mate, that's fine. My system is one based upon trend following and one based upon understanding how demand and supply are interacting. Uh, this is not a buy for me. It's I, I can't even go hold. I can't even. I'm not even going to say hold it until it closes beneath that. I think it looks that bad. <laughs> Two twenty two. Maybe that's the only thing that's going to keep you in it. Uh, uh, we we just above it. Yeah. I don't know. Wait a second. What's going on here? That low there. It's not Two twenty two. I misread it. Uh, low is Two dollars. There you go. Two dollars. That low there. One ninety six. Oh, it has. Where did it close that day? Uh, close 201, so just closed above. There you go, just closed above, and today it's just hanging in there. Uh, let's go sell on this one. I'm not even going to punch it into the fundamental analysis tool. Sorry, Lakshan, I didn't mean to hurt your feelings if you love it. Oh, why do we love stocks? So they don't love us back. They're not like our pets, you know, the only living creatures in the world that truly unconditionally love us. Why do we love stocks? We don't, you know, we don't come home and BHP comes running up to us, you know. <laughs> happy to see us. It's never happened. So why do we love them? You know, they are just, stocks for me are just like cattle. You've got to treat, well, I'm not a farmer, but imagine you're a, you're, a, you're a cattle farmer. You know, and that cattle farmer, you know, these cows are nice and fat. You fatten these, you hold them up while they're getting nice and fat. But once they're nice and fat, for whatever reason, it's time, to, time for them to go. You know where they're going, but you're not standing there at the gate as you pat them on the backside, getting them on the truck, going, oh, Betsy, oh, Daisy, oh, Lucinda. Oh, I'm gonna miss you so much. Oh, no, no, look, 
Mr. Truck Driver, forget about it. I want to keep all my cattle. No, no, no. You're patting them on the backside, getting them on the truck and go get your money for them. You know, stocks are like cattle. Do not fall in love with them. Next one is from Muhammad X Tech. And it looks pretty good. Uh, and it probably would have looked way better if the market wasn't so awful. But you can see, you know, significant outperformance here. But I think, let's face it, the outperformance and the opportunity for this one to excel, you know, to be wonderful, I think is limited given how bad the rest of the market is. The candles don't look great. So I, all I can see there is black candles. I'm concerned by just that. Even it, just that is enough. Um, for me to be out because when things go up on black candles it just means that this pesky latent supply program supply supply from insiders uh, potentially also um, if I if I really squint um, to the point where I can barely see I can call it a hold but on the basis of the short-term trend uh, and the long-term trend it's, it's, you know, it's still above that uh, well, let's go I'll go hold it's not a buy and it's getting close to a sell for Muhammad, sorry Muhammad, I wish I had a bit of news for you on that. Uh, but at least it hasn't done as poorly as other things. And if you're in it, then you know maybe this is an opportunity to to get a good whack of your capital back and just just you know, just play it like Fonzie and just be cool for a little while until the market sorts itself out and we've got clearer you know a clearer idea of where we're going. And you can always get back into that one. High pages is it uh, it's from Doug? Doug's being pretty cheeky here. I wonder what Doug thinks about this one. Um, Doug, you know my thoughts on this one. You've been around listening to me long enough to know what I think about this one. I can't buy it. Um, the last candle's good, don't get me wrong, for, for the bottom pickers out there. And I know there are always, as much as, as, much as you know, as much as you come over here on Tuesdays and you listen to me, there, I haven't completely got it out of everybody yet, but there are always the bottom picker out there. Um, look, decent candle. Uh, not uh, you know not so inspirational that it would make me break my rules uh, because you can see you know you get these decent candles then all we do is end up back at the bloody pink zone and then down we go again uh, so let, 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 let's have a chat about it when it's doing this um, so we've got the good price action if you're not sure what good price action is because you're listening to me for the first time that's the good price action uh, what's even better price action well that's when you have this sort of a thing going on okay and you can see how the second from last trough, right? Uh, so the last trough is at the second. Let me start again. You can see how the last trough is at or above the second from last peak. Okay, why why that? Um, so if we go, there's there's your T, um, there's your P naught, and that's your P one. Uh, so you can see how the last trough is at or above the second from last peak. And this is this is what I call great price action um, because you can have uh, up upwards price action, sure, you know, price action that's going up, but it could look like this. And that's not as good for us, okay? It's not indicating that demand is as uh, confident on uh, through this buy the dip process. They're all buy the dip, um, but if we had to go, let's say we go A, you know, well, is that B? It's not really B, but C, you know, C is much better than A, for example. You know, they're all showing uh, an excess of demand. They're all showing by the dip activity, but C is the one we want to go for. So let's uh, let's first see C down here with some nice candles, and then, Doug, we'll have a chat about potentially picking the bottom on this. Maybe Doug's looking at it for a short, which is a, a different story altogether. Um, completely ruling out buy. Uh, if if you're holding it, I'd say, well, why? <laughs> why? You yeah, haven't listened to a thing I've told you. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. You haven't listened to a thing I've told you. And now, um, if you're holding it, yeah, okay. Hang in there until it closes below uh, 88 because that's the next leg down. Okay, next one's for Eastern. Let's uh, let's go AGY. Argozy. Oh, so much promise. Uh, it's so frustrating uh, that you, hey, you don't you don't get to pick when the bear markets come, do you? Uh, and uh, I tell you what, if if it didn't happen, I reckon this would be seventy cents right now. But you know, this, try try telling that to the market gods and asking for your money back. It's just it's not going to happen. We've got problems here um, below thirty five. We've got problems because now you know we talked about good price action. Now we're in this this stuff here, uh, which is which is a problem in terms of, well, we're not buy the dip, we sell the rally, and uh, we're gonna have further problems over here. Uh, so uh, for, for me, uh, um, I, you know, I like the Argozi story, uh, but the price action is saying, this could take a while before the market gets the confidence uh, back to, to, to push this one higher. Uh, and in fact, you know, sideways at best, 
uh, might be the well sideways might be the best case scenario I'm concerned about it I think you can hear from the tone of my voice I hate to just go and say well you know it's a sell now but it's I can't see why you would own it, it it's I can't go hold and I can't go buy so process of elimination uh, maybe if I, if I really find trying to find uh, you know reasons to hold on to it you've got that long-term trend zone but the problem is just how we behaved at it we behaved very poorly at it this candle here look at that just didn't care I mean when you hit like, that's good so that's what I expect like when we get to these zones I expect that and then you get a little bit of a wobble but we don't take out that low okay so that that's good then you get a little bit of a wobble but then we took out the low that's bad um, yeah let's hope no, I don't really like to use that word that's a silly word Let's, let's, let's never use that word in this session again. Um, why? Why are we hoping for stuff? Let's call a spade a spade. Let's say that things aren't looking good on Ogozi anymore. Sorry, Eastern. I wish I had uh, better news on that one. Let's look at Lake, which the last time we looked at it was going gangbusters for whatever reason. The market was absolutely getting belted and it was here. It was on this day here. And I said, hey, it's probably the only thing I buy today. Uh, am I regretting that decision? I've regretted calling a few things a buy because as good as the charts have looked uh, like that last one Eastern it, it, the market's just made a mess of them in a better environment they would have done better but that's not the environment you, you know, sometimes you've got to stop banging your head against the brick wall and say well the reality is the reality and maybe buying stocks is not such a clever thing to do uh, as good as this is that's not what I wanted to do as good as this is like, and this is good don't get me wrong like, this is amazing and this is great and the fact it's all happening here and above there and in here is tick 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 but if it's so tick 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 what's this all about and why did it happen on such huge volume so we've got all of the, the people getting themselves set to the long side in here and then getting wiped out through here uh, and a lot of the buy the dippers I think probably getting hurt as well I'm concerned about this being a false break you know again another failure let me get rid of some of these uh, another uh, you know another false break potentially of this short-term trend zone well, we talked about those false breaks um, I think it's bad through here and I think it's lights out through here um, so you know I regret doing the about face on you but again that's where we are in the market you have to be prepared to do about faces I'm concerned about it. I'm going to go squeaking in at a hold okay because I don't like the volume I don't like this 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 candle uh, and it's not a buy it's not a buy for me uh, maybe not quite a sell yet maybe we can give it the benefit of the doubt just on the basis of how strong that is okay I hate holding stuff in hope and I feel as we look through today's list that's kind of what we're doing over and over again uh, this one's easy critical resources there's no hope uh, there's no hope remaining unfortunately but I think the key here is again when I talked about um, the one before was X tech was just the black candles and I said well, I can't even I can't own it just on the basis of, the, of those black candles because even when it's going up it's going down <laughs> uh, because it, it pops up on um, chat rooms and, and news and further but the, the, the insiders are selling the hell out of this you know even on the way up it's sort of going down I don't know there's okay but you know even on the way up it's kind of going down um, so insiders are selling out of that one and now that there's no demand left the insiders are still just as motivated to get out I can't see any reason to own critical resources at this stage I'm very sorry again Sam I'm apologizing uh, to everyone Tanya I was looking to get back into Qantas and wanted to see whether uh, now was a good opportunity to get in for a nibble and I'm hearing this nibble coming in all over the place I do watch um, the call each day a lot of people talking about nibbles uh, look I, I, <laughs> I was about to say I could nibble that uh, no no I'm gonna I'm not gonna be one of those I'm but one of those people I'm gonna say the trend is down uh, I'm gonna trust the trend where okay so where could I take a nibble so I'm not just going to take a nibble on the basis that you know this is a level so I saw that okay that's a level you know a decent bounce you know v-shaped bounces if you're a trader maybe lots of them there but no let me see let me wait for the stuff I need to see which is this sort of stuff uh, and then we need to see how we behave uh, in this zone here so x marks the spot uh, and Tony we talked about those candles we don't want to see the black candles in there because it's going to tell us that the supply that exists from here okay we don't know how big it's going to how big that supply is it could be hey for all we know it could be this big it could be bigger um, but the candles will tell us how big is it big it is we hit that level with white candles a very little supply probably we've got through it if we hit that level with a bunch of black candles 
Um, there's lots of supply there. What are the candles? Again, Tanya, something like that, something like that. We see those in there. It's bad news. Okay, so I'm not going to take a nibble on Qantas. Let me very quickly for you uh, put it in here and go QAN. And I promise no more than 30 seconds on this one. Uh, we have 12 brokers, pretty positive towards it. So two strong buys, eight buys, two holds, one sell. Average price target, astronomical, you know, 44% above the current price. I don't believe that, to be honest. Um, th these are not working because we need to get to a point where they're starting to make money, which is going to be uh, FY23. So I need to change that. Uh, low risk on an 85% uh, increase in earnings. I'm going to go high risk because <laughs> there's plenty of things that can go wrong there. Target PE for Qantas. Uh, I would say it would be high single digits and no more than that. And I don't think I'm going to do that. I'm going to go dynamic F and 6.3 is appropriate. Uh, and if I squinted, maybe I could go eight. But we're getting, um, I think Qantas is, I don't think Qantas is a screaming bargain down here at all. If I gave it the benefit of the doubt and said maybe eight, um, then I could probably get to um, a little bit of value in there. Uh, but you can see um, how the difference that that, um, that benchmark PE does make. So uh, I'm going to go somewhere around about fair value. Because if I split the difference, between this, which was 6.3, 6 it's probably a bit low, and eight, which is the most I would go. Um, you could you could say, well, Carl, what does seven look like? You know, and then we're getting fair values. Qantas, even after the falls, in my opinion, is fair value. Ignore these; they don't they don't drag them down because it's an admission that they've got it wrong. They leave those targets up there and they hope the price goes back up so they don't look so silly. Uh, okay, next one is from David. And he is asking about Paladin, uh, another uranium stock. And I fear, yeah, there we go. Same what I said, same as what I said for Boss. Unfortunately, David, as as much as you know, I, I want to believe the story. Um, I have to go with the market's opinion, and the market now is is very um, is very concerned about these, and potentially uh, we could see it move back down to even that forty cent level. So it's a tough decision. Today's candle is, is encouraging. Let's hope it, it closes there, and let's say if it closes here or better that high 62 or higher I think maybe then you could say well we're, we're recouping a lot of yesterday's supply side candle and that is that's a nasty candle through what should have been um, demand and we talked about when demand goes it can go right there's your point of demand and that demand now is that it's going to act as supply did were there lots of people that got in at this level yes there were okay this is their break-even point uh, now David and they could be taking that opportunity to get their money back uh, so this is the level you need to watch now. Maybe there's enough in it to hold it on that last candle, uh, but keep an eye on that level going forward. Uh, let's have a look at the next one, which is ICG, which I'm not familiar with, Inca Minerals. Now let's go zoom normal. Um, I can do this one pretty quickly as well for you, Brett, not knocking my socks off, and not many probably will but today. But you, know, you can see excess demand over this side here, equilibrium over here, and I think we are now moving into this uh, phase now of excess supply. If I had to go buy, hold, or sell on Inca Minerals, I'm going to rule out the buy. Um, I'm going to just go hold just uh, on the basis of this huge candle here. It's impressive, and it did happen on some nice volume. So I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt and say that as long as it stays above this demand point here, you can go hold, but otherwise um, it's starting to look very, very precarious. Next one is for Clinton, and he's requesting MinCorp. We're not too bad on time. We've got about 10 minutes. Good chance I'll get to the bottom of the list, but please stop putting any new ones in. And I can see that the last one on the list is RMS. Okay, so I won't be going any uh, further past that one. Uh, MinCorp. Again, another one we've sort of we've looked at from time to time. We have said, well, the overall trend is good. Uh, pressure here. We have talked about the pressure. I can't remember if it was here the last time we looked at it. But anyway, even if it wasn't, um, here's, here's your problem. Um, so there's your supply event. Uh, and we often talk about whether supply events uh, are sufficient enough for us to act upon. And hopefully I've tuned your eye in enough to understand that, that I think that one is. Because of its size, its magnitude, and because it, it, it's low close as well, because it also took out. Uh, this little, see that little um, trough there? It took that out as well, close beneath that, beneath a couple of demand candles as well. So, you know, hindsight's a wonderful thing, but you know, you've got to take these and you've got to run with them. And it's not just that, and hopefully, again, your eye is tuned in, and so a few of you are already screaming at your computer screen, and say, Carl, it's so obvious, look at that. Not only do you have a supply event, we then have had that building supply you keep talking about, and then we had that follow through, that, that, uh, that sort of secondary supply event, which really confirms it. And then really, once you take this out, there's absolutely no reason for you to still be in this stock. So if we had to go one, two, three, as in you know, exiting a third of your position, as soon as you see that black candle, that's 
minus one third, right? Then this next candle really for me, it, it's bad enough given the first candle to go minus one third and then the break beneath here is minus one third. And just doing the maths, um, you should, really should be out of uh, Mincor uh, or somewhere around this period here and you wouldn't even care what it's doing right now. What's it doing right now? It doesn't look great because we've sliced straight through that long-term uptrend zone um, and with black candles and today's candle is awful. It's awful. On an up day, we should not be seeing that and I do fear now that uh, we are in a supply side situation where uh, this area here is now going to act as a point of supply going forward uh, and that is uh, our problem. But once again, you'll know if I'm not here to tell you uh, that if we hit that zone with the white candles, we're probably okay. Maybe you can hang on. Uh, but if we hit that zone with the black candles, then it's going to be lights out for mineral resources. What I will, uh, let's let's skip the fundamentals. I've, I have done mineral many times, Clinton. Um, maybe check some of the recordings there. Let's keep moving. Um, going to Shah, and Shah's asking for CSL, always a crowd favorite as well, um, and not looking great. Unfortunately, couldn't get through this zone here. This is encouraging. Um, so I'm gonna go hold just on the basis that, that this is all very encouraging actually. Uh, but the problem now is this zone here. So Sharp, we've talked many times about you know, waiting and watching for particular price action in particular zones. And this is your zone here on CSL. So around about that 265 to 270. The white candles in there will give you cause to continue to hang on. But the black candles in there, I think now CSL is, is in a lot of trouble because this is so well established. Um, you know, we've sort of here, we're sort of here. And really, I think this is kind of that last point where maybe uh, we could get into a really well uh, entrenched downtrend. Uh, so very, very careful. Be very careful on that one is my suggestion, Shah. Now, next one is from Michael. Michael wants ALL, which we can see was a market darling. Boom, we can see how trends change. Michael is doing the, you know, the head slapping on the forehead going, yes, Carl, I probably should have spotted that. Um, but this is good. This is okay now, Michael. I mean, look, that's good. That's good. It's happening yeah, at a higher level. Okay, um, these are all good. I like these. You know, the, the demand's in there. There's some pesky supply, but the market's absolutely tanked. Um, okay, let me show you this. Okay, uh, so you're going to see it move. So this is an indicator which you can't see, not because um, it's not important. It's just we've never talked about it. But this is my relative strength comparative over the last 63 periods. 63 periods in trading days is three months. What it's telling me is when the stock in question is outperforming or underperforming the ASX 300, the broader you know uh, blue chip universe. And we can see um, so green is good and red is bad. Uh, and as an indicator just in itself, you could just trade this, couldn't you? Like how? Awesome is that. This is a proprietary indicator. It doesn't exist here in the world. It's my intellectual property. Um, but you can see, and this is what I like, is that we are beating the market over the last um, you know, few weeks there. So that's really impressive. Uh, I, I can definitely get to a hold here, but here's the but, as usual, the pressure points. Where are the pressure points? And Michael, no doubt, you're all over this. Uh, Michael's going, well, it's here, Carl, you know, around there. And, and Michael's saying, well, Carl, what are we going to do? We're going to play it like Fonzie. You're going to be pretty, pretty, pretty cool and calm on this one. I'm going to get too excited until we see the right price section and the right candles in that zone. Uh, and then I might even add some more to my long-term superannuation portfolio if that occurs. Until then, I'm going to hold on, you know, play it cool, um, but be attentive for signs that supply is building. And certainly if it gets beneath there, then I'm going to really rethink my strategy on this one. Uh, let's keep moving. We won't do the fundamentals. Try and get through the rest of these in charts. This is why this one is from uh, Tanya. I think I've done one for you, Tanya. But the elders do it very quickly. Uh, you know, ditto on aristocrat, isn't it? I mean, there's some good signs there, but we are under significant pressure here in this long-term trend. That short-term trend is well established. If we go back and look at the supply events, that oops. <laughs> Wait a sec, that is enough. That's your supply event, that's your trend killer. Uh, hard, to, hard to stay there after that, especially when you get that, especially when you get that, especially when you get that. Today's candle is good. I'm gonna say your last bastion yeah, of support there is that load, close below 12.32. I'm personally, I would move to a seller. Maybe if I squint, I can call it a hold. Buy is completely off the table, Tanya. And Chris, uh, we love stocks because we pick them and we don't want to be proven wrong. So we give ourselves a reason to hold even when we shouldn't, I guess. I think you're right there, um, but I don't think there's any reason to love them. And as I said, the less you know about them, the better. CRN from Alan, uh, looks okay, Alan. I mean, today's a good candle, but the candle is still live, okay. Yesterday was, wasn't was terrible because we had that last shadow and it happened in, in a logical point where we should see some demand. Uh, and actually there's some demand, there's a demand, demand. I'm seeing demand, I'm seeing lots of demand here. Okay, so this, if, if this, this is actually not so bad. So if, if, we, if we know, right, if the chart is telling us, well, there's your demand, 
As long as we're, we're okay around there, we're sort of there or thereabouts, we're okay. We get beneath that level and I'd say it's all over. So that low there, 156.5, it's looking very, very uh, shaky beneath that. Why are we bouncing here? Well, probably no surprise. That's a pretty sensible level to do it. I can go hold on this. Look, doesn't look great because of the rest of the stuff, you know, uh, the supply event. Was that enough? Was that enough of a supply event? It wasn't great. Certainly when you when you um, combine that event, and if that wasn't enough for you, okay, I get it. When you combine that event with the building supply, then we're starting to get concerned, and then this is, this is the problem. There's, there's your problem right there. So you, this is manage your exit sort of pattern. Um, but if you haven't done that, then I can go hold. It's not a buy, uh, not a buy for obvious reasons. Uh, to, to upgrade it to buy, you need. I need to do all the other stuff. You know what I talked about: the candles and the price action. And um, coming into this zone here uh, with some real uh, impetus and some gusto, hitting that zone with some white candles, uh, which we have seen, and not black candles. Okay, let's go S32. Uh, I'm concerned about this one. Looks like uh, mineral resources. We are through here now, uh, and the, the possibility is that we, we do this. Uh, so you know what to look for. I don't have to tell you again, but this is the level now. So 420, 430, uh, if we get back there, that's the level. We could be at the start, everyone, and this is going to frighten the pants off so many people here and the thousand of people that watch this in the recording, but uh, that's where I'm supposed to be next. But think about what happens next. How many times have you seen this and then what happens next? Okay, so you you do the you do the maths on this one. You know, why, why should South Thirty Two be any different? Uh, why? Because it has a great portfolio of uh, mineral resources that the world needs. That's yesterday's news. Uh, Has for Alan. That's your third one, Alan. Very very naughty. Um, I don't like it. It looks terrible. But I don't need to say any more than that. It's not doing any of the stuff I like to see. Uh, now these are the sh from Anonymous SNAS, uh, the short the short ones. I think Anonymous go back to what I said about the indexes. I think the the, the trends are still down. So in the, on, in that case, these are okay. Uh, um, I don't like um, shorting uh, indexes though because I just think it's too hard. There's always something bloody going up. So I tend to tend to focus more on short shorting stocks. And we've seen a bunch of stocks that look terrible today. Uh, from Sam, uh, credit clear. CRR, uh, uh, credit clear. Uh, CCR, well, hey, we need critical resources anyway. That looked terrible. Uh, let's do your one here, Sam, uh, which looks just as bad, Sam. So copy and paste everything I said for um, critical resources to now what I'm about to say on credit clear. Uh, in fact, this one might even look a bit worse. So is there, you know, is there any hope? Oh, well, okay, there's a little bit of a bounce here, but. The, the risk is the risk is this, isn't it? We hit here and then we go there and then we continue this. Um, so I'm not a buyer of that one. I don't know anything about it though, uh, Sam, and I'm sure it has some wonderful fundamentals that if I gave you the chance, you'd tell me all about it and I, my eyes would glaze over and I'd probably not listen to you anyway. Uh, now, F uh, Fuel is the next one. Uh, we have got some problems here. Uh, generally, when we see this sort of vertical uh, supply event, it's not great. Um, we then will uh, look to these areas here and see how we respond. Uh, this is the, we really, um, it's probably no, no point doing any analysis on this thing. We need to analyze the chart of um, West Texas uh, crude oil. I don't have one uh, up to date at this point in time, uh, but you know, whatever that's gonna correspond to around here might be about 115 off the top of my head. Okay, but the, the trend, a lot of damage, a great deal of damage has been done to that trend. And I think we need to really uh, think, rethink our strategy on that. The problem with oil is that it's bullish, it's bullish, it's bullish until it goes up so much that it breaks the economy and then it becomes bearish uh, by its own right. And, uh, and that maybe that's oh, WDS, where's WDS? It's not in that list because we got the new code. Um, this one looks okay though. I think you know, today's candle is very impressive. Uh, maybe um, maybe we will get a bounce on oil. I was about to say maybe I'm wrong on oil. I hope I'm wrong on oil because I, do, I really do want these energy stocks to succeed. I have to go hold on this one. I think we're okay there, um, but it's on notice. It's on notice. I don't think these candles were all that terrible, to be honest. In a terrible market, uh, commendable fighting retreat. And today's candle is impressive. It needs to stay like that though because it's a live candle. So I'm happy with Woodside. Uh, anonymous, I'd be happy to hold that. But you know, thanks for you know bringing that whole energy thing to our attention. It's worth definitely worth talking about. Points bet, um, is this the beginning of the next bull market in points bet? Maybe, uh, maybe because 
these are three pretty decent candles right here one two three no complaints about those in a pretty terrible market got ourselves back above this short-term downtrend zone this uh, clearly obviously you don't have to be a genius to work out that that's a major problem now what would we need to do we, we look we need to get above this that'd be nice above three dollars we need to do some of this action sort of this this sort of stuff going on here preferably with last troughs at or above second from last peaks because we haven't done that for such a very long time white candles and the right demand candles coming at those points you know continuing push in supply to remove the um uh, in volume to remove the supply that's in the system so as bad as all of that looks you know i'm not the broken record you know we, we, we're looking uh looking at demand and supply and how it's changing and there does appear to be um, the start of a change in the demand supply dynamics here but for me it's too early okay so i'm happy to give this a dollar fifty even before I jump in because if I get it right and it only does it only gets back to half of where it was who cares all right but if I get it wrong well you know the drill on this one maybe it's going to 20 cents okay but there is enough in there for me to call it a hold okay so I'm not uh, as much of a stick in, in the mud to go oh downtrend downtrend uh, you know sell no no let's let's listen to the market the market is saying that there, there, are, there is excess demand in the system. Maybe it's short covering. I don't know, but it's one of the most shorted stocks out there. Uh, so it looks very interesting, David. Thanks for bringing that to my attention. Not a buy yet, but I can definitely go hold. Uh, now, this was the last one we're going to do today, which is Remelius, and looking at maybe this is a proxy for the gold stocks. The best gold stock, I thought, was um, Capricorn. Um, you know, that beautiful candle there on Fridays been beaten back a bit but that's probably one the, the one that comes to mind is the best uh, rms it doesn't look good I, I think this one's in real trouble and you can see short-term trends long-term trends black candles even today you know when, when the market's up uh, and this one looks like unfortunately yeah there's probably more in it it's, it's just maybe even just getting started uh, in that downtrend because we had the opportunity to do something good but we, we really failed didn't we uh, and you, you can see these patterns see these patterns they just keep happening They've been happening since Adam was a boy, way before you and I ever started looking at the markets, and they will continue to happen way after we stop. On that cheery, cheery note, everybody, uh, actually Galileo, I have to do this one because he was asked before Amelius. Uh, Galileo, I'm on record. Uh, I think it was uh, on maybe this day here, uh, maybe it was that day. It was a developing day. It was a really black candle and it got a bit of a rally. Uh, go back. I'm pretty sure that was it. I said this thing. That's the high. This thing will never trade higher than that ever before. Uh, it gave me a few nervous moments. It was looking okay through there. Uh, but one, two, three. I think there's enough supply in here to say that uh, maybe I'm going to be right on this one. Uh, I can go. I can go a hold because let's face it. You know these are all amazing. These are all amazing. I hope to give it the benefit of the doubt. Uh, but if you got in it here, uh, and that's not me, uh, you know, I think you got to be sensible and manage your exits, so a partial exit at the very least. Uh, and hold on, hold on, get, have some skin in the game. Because if, if I'm wrong and it blasts through $2, the next move is going to be massive. Um, but until then, let's say that uh, the supply is creeping in and maybe is doing enough damage to confidence in it. What is, let's face it, a pretty terrible market to, um, to sap this one and maybe take it back down again. But some skin in the game is the way I would tackle it. Let us close out today's session. Don't worry, I'll be back next Tuesday to answer your questions on the stocks in your portfolio and more. That's the registration link. If you're watching me in the recording on YouTube, come and join me live and get your questions answered. Uh, if you're uh, not a client of Think Markets, well, you really should be because we do have all the products that you want to trade on the Australian market and beyond both direct shares and they are hindered sponsored as well. So they are yours. They're not held in trust with a whole a bunch of other people. Uh, great customer support. You can access this anytime and we really do solve your problems very quickly. Actually talk to a real person uh, and a world-class training app and of course my research. Head to the Think Markets website there for more details. Set up an account. You could be trading in just minutes. If you're new to Think Markets, we do have this uh, 10 free trades offer going at the moment. But if you say you saw me in Ask the Experts, you'll get a bonus 10 free trades. There are some T's and C's. Pretty simple stuff. You just have to use them by a certain date. Um, head to the website for details or contact your customer service representative if you're already a client of ours we do have this great uh, refer a friend offer going where if you do refer four friends and i'm sure you have four 
friends trading with their banks still paying exorbitant rates come up to us they'll benefit and you'll benefit as well with 12 months of free trading about 200 trades pretty neat as well uh, apart from that if you're watching me on YouTube or any of the other socials make sure you hit that subscribe button to remain notified of any future videos and of course smash the like button to let us know you love what we're doing so we'll keep doing it apart from that it has been a pleasure chatting with you today all the best for your trading and investing until we catch up again bye bye for now Thank you.